Call it in the air, heads or tails. Sometimes it'll be heads, sometimes tails. I don't know what any particular flip will be, but I do know that if I flip a coin many times, it will be heads about half the time and the other half tails. That's a pattern. In the long run, all random events have a pattern. If I know the pattern, I can predict how likely something is to happen. To look for patterns, we rely on the mathematics of statistics. Statistics is the science of collecting and analyzing data. And it touches all of our lives. Statistics is a part of our games. It helps in the search for new life-saving drugs. And it enables us to gauge people's opinions, what we think and feel about certain issues. Every day we flip a coin and try to learn from the patterns we find. We're living our chances of a lifetime. Our high today, 61 degrees, the low 37, just two degrees shy of a record for the day. Many right of us get a daily dose of statistics through the media. 61 degrees, relative humidity at 36 percent. We use this information to make sense of the world. For statistician Hal Stern, statistics helps him to track his favorite baseball teams. To see the game behind the numbers. I always liked numbers. I was the kid who played with his calculator uh, more than was probably good. And uh, always interested in sports. And thinking back now, I realize it's probably for the numbers. I was the little league, the guy on the little league team who computed people's batting averages and, uh, and the like. One of the things I like about all sports is that there is, seems to me anyway, to be uncertainty kind of at its finest. Baseball is, is a fine example. The uncertainty is there and there's also a long history of keeping track of records and numbers and averages. And it's a wonderful place to, to play. Numbers and averages are important to statisticians and baseball is filled with revealing data. When I think of baseball statistics, I think of batting averages and one loss records and you know, pitchers earned run averages and those are what I like to think of as small s statistics. In baseball, small s statistics are used to track players' performances. And some small s statistics are legendary. Hank Aaron's record of 755 home runs is a small ass statistic that has stood for more than two decades. Out of here, it's gone. It's 715, the home run champion of all time. Cal Ripken entered the record books by playing in 2,131 consecutive games. That's a streak of 13 straight years. Nolan Ryan has amazed baseball fans with an incredible small s statistic. He has pitched seven games in which no player has gotten a hit. Small s statistics, they're numbers and they're interesting. But the field of statistics, or capital S statistics, um, is more about drawing conclusions from those numbers. In baseball parks across the country, 
the person responsible for making decisions based on statistics is the manager. The manager in baseball has the role in some ways that the statistician would want. And he knows his players and their abilities and um, is faced with situations every inning uh, about where decisions have to be made. Hal Stern is a fan of the Iowa Cubs, a triple A team for the Chicago Cubs. One step away from the majors. The Cubs manager is Ron Clark. For nine innings, Clark will rely on statistics to evaluate and make decisions about his team and the game. Hey, let's bring it on. Your 1995 Iowa Cubs. This process of analyzing data to draw conclusions began more than 1,000 years ago, half a world away. England, the Middle Ages. William the Conqueror is presiding over a vast kingdom, a collection of wealth he actually knows very little about. To assess his kingdom, he assembles an army to gather data. William the Conqueror wanted data on all of England, and he sent around his data gatherers they divided up the country into small areas and asked of each area how many people were living there and what sort of agricultural products were coming from there. This, in a sense, was a beginning of statistics. But there was no real statistical analysis at that time. It was simply a tremendously ambitious data gathering operation. This collection of statistics provided William the Conqueror with an assessment of his kingdom and wealth. The text was named the Doomsday Book. But the real power of the book would not be recognized for another 500 years. By the middle of the 17th century, England had grown but nobody really knew the size of the population. According to popular belief, England's largest city, London, was home to more than two million people. To one London resident, this was idle speculation. John Grant believed that he could deduce London's true population by using data from the Doomsday Book. Many statisticians and historians of statistics date the origin of statistical thinking to John Grant. John Grant was not an academic. He ran a store, he was a haberdasher, but he got hold of these records and began looking at them and was able to do some rather remarkable analysis. By studying the stats in the Doomsday Book, one piece of information got Grant's attention. On average, it appeared as if there 